What's up, family? Welcome back to another legendary top of the movie action video. Let's go. NBA tradition says rookies must carry all veterans' bags on road trips, but a rookie Larry Bird. Hmm. Before we get into the, a, the rookie Larry Bird, I wonder do that tradition still stand today? Where they have to carry all the bags? Hmm. Comment down below, family. What you guys think? Do you guys think rookies? And the NBA still to this day still carry the bags um, of NBA players that already been in the league because they're a rookie in the league and, you know, just now coming to the league. On his very first road trip with the Boston Celtics, stood up in front of every veteran on the bus and said, I want you guys to know I'm never going to get you any water and I'm never going to carry one bag ever. That's what I'm talking about. We're going to set the tone. We're going to make a difference now. We're going to do this a little bit different or a lot of bit different because at the end of the day, I'm here to shake the game up. I know what I stand for. I know how I am. I know where I'm going and I know where I'm headed and I know what value I bring to the game, let alone what value I bring to, my, I bring to the game and what value I have within myself because I'm comfortable within myself. And at the end of the day, I've been perfecting and working on my craft. So at the end of the day, I'm going to stand on that. So we're not doing this. You feel me? And he never did. Mm. And later that year, when he was confronted by an old Hall of Famer, Pete Maravich, Larry Bird said something so disrespectful, it sent Pete into retirement. Dang. This is the story of how a rookie Larry Bird established himself as the alpha male and dominated the NBA from day one. Oh, just imagine. Someone touch your heart so bad that he was like, I got to retire. You know what I'm saying? Like, dang, bro. My man was butthurt. My man had to be butthurt, bro. Walk in the first day of camp, them guys were on the floor stretching, and here comes the white savior, here comes this, here comes that. I sort of enjoyed it because I knew I was going to battle them all day. <laughs> Cedric Maxwell, the Celtics' leading scorer the year before Larry arrived, had a rude awakening. I like how he just said that, though, Larry Bird, because I sort of enjoyed it because I knew I was going to battle him all day. Battle him all day. Basically, he's saying he's going to wear their butt out the same way he did Michael Cooper, who was trying to defend him. <sighs> Bro, I'm about to give y'all what y'all asking for. I'm about to, matter of fact, I'm about to give y'all what y'all think y'all know. But in reality, I don't know nothing because when I give y'all this game, it's going to change your whole perspective. Cedric Maxwell, the Celtics' leading scorer the year before Larry arrived, had a rude awakening. He was skeptical that the self-proclaimed hick from French Lick was all hype until the bird. Uh, let me read that. That the self-proclaimed hick from French Lick, the bird is big on our street. Mm. All hype until that first day in training camp, and all it took was one day. I'm thinking, oh, he's slow, he can't get off a shot. He's not that strong. This is going to be a layup. Bam, knocks down a jump shot. Okay, maybe that was luck. Gets the ball again. Bam, knocks down. My man basically walking while he throwing up a shot like it's a layup, bro. Like, like bro, you make this look so smooth and just like, you know what I'm saying? Confidence within itself is at an extreme. But you got to have confidence in yourself and you got to help you and you got to be there for you so you can be there for anybody in life. You know what I'm saying? It don't have to just be a team. But when it comes to sports, it's going to give you some life lessons. But look how my man just throwing up these shots like this, bro. Like, where they do that at? Look. Gets the ball again. Bam. Knocks down another jump shot. Now I'm thinking like, okay, hey, you know what? I'm finna D this guy up. I'm gonna show him what it's like. 20 feet away, bam. 25 feet away, bam. <laughs> I, my mind just goes so good. Damn, this white guy can play. <laughs> the Celtics were the second Dang. worst team in the league before Larry Bird arrived, winning only 29 games. But even- Only 29 games? <sighs> Bro, that's crazy, bro. And I feel like, I feel like 
the Celtics, the Boston Celtics basketball team, obviously Larry Bird was the first. I feel like they do birth all stars. Just like I could say the same thing about the Los Angeles Lakers. Um, just like the Celtics with butt before Jason Tatum come. I know this is getting a little bit off his, off the topic, but the Boston Celtics, um, you know, whole basketball franchise, or I should say, the Boston Celtics organization, they're very good at scouting out great, amazing players. You know, you know, you got Paul Pierce back in his day. You know, you got some, you got some people. You know, after Larry Bird. But I like I, I want to say Larry Bird set the tone, not just for the Boston Celtics organization, but the whole basketball franchise. That's what makes them so amazing. Like you cannot, you, you you cannot discuss basketball without him being, you know, one of them ones. You know what I'm saying? As a rookie, Larry Bird led that exact same Celtics team. To a 61 and 21 record. Mm. That 32 game turnaround was the greatest single season turnaround in NBA history. Mm. And what's most impressive is he did it with no Robert Parrish, no Kevin McHale, no Dennis Johnson, Bill Walton, or anyone. It was all Larry Bird. But how did Larry get so confident and so arrogant? Because at every level, he proved the doubters wrong. In college, he took a mid-major, Indiana State, to 33-0 and before facing what turned. Do you guys think that he went to Indiana? Do you guys think that he, he's like the president or, you know, a big dog owning the Pacers franchise in Indiana because he played the Indiana State and it's like back to his roots? You know, from the beginning, before he went to the NBA, because obviously he went to college and then the NBA. But do you guys think he? You do you guys think he owns the Indiana Pacers? Um, out of reminiscing back from when he first started being at Indiana State. Comment down below, family. What you guys think of that? Just thought of that. To be his greatest rival, Magic Johnson, in the NCAA title game. But here's how Magic recalls first mm. meeting Larry the summer before that game. The summer before, they had the WIT tournament. Okay. And they brought all the best college players together. Okay. To play against the world. Okay. And man, <clears throat> I see this guy, you know, blonde hair. You, know. <laughs> <laughs> right, me... you cannot not you cannot attach that laugh to Shannon Sharp. And I didn't even know that they um he Shannon Sharp interviewed Magic Johnson. Tell you what, that's shows what I know. He can play. Okay. Man, I'm sitting there watching him shoot Shannon. He must have made 30 in a row all <laughs> net. I so said, he was Steph Curry before Steph yeah, Wade. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I'm sitting there saying, <laughs> this dude can play. Okay. Then we got in the game. Jack Gibbons was player of the year that year. Right. He tore him up, man. Man, Larry Bird was taking it to him. <laughs> I said, oh, man, I'm calling back home, Shannon. Oh, he for real. He for real. This right. new Larry Bird? Right. Oh, he got it. He right. can play. He's dominating Jack right. Evans. And they said, no way. I said, oh, yeah, he's dominating. I think our first game was in Kentucky. We got about a 10, 12-point lead. Man, they put us in. Went to 25, 30, just that fast. Mm. Fast break again. Three on two. Griffin. One. Cookies, cookies. My man Larry Bird got the steal. He said, man, give me that. You don't know what to do with that. Let me get that off your hands real quick, sir. Bird. Take us out. The league go back down. Put us back in. That's Bird and Johnson. The show started again. When you play with Magic, there's just something about it. You want to make that extra pass. You want to get that rebound and start to break. Oh, so them football passes that LeBron been doing, Larry Bird did that before LeBron. You already did the threes before Steph Curry. Now the football passes was before LeBron. Oh, okay. We came down a couple times. I go behind my back, no look to him. He no look back to me. And I'm laying it up. I'm saying, oh, man. Here's that last play. Magic Johnson going in, drops off the bird. Bird puts it back off inside to Johnson. Super bad. This guy got game. Little did Magic know 
that he would meet Larry Bird again. But this time, it would be in the national title game. Here mm. we go, six, seven months later. Right. We're playing in the NCAA championship game. He's player of the year. Sports Illustrated, all the magazines got he on the cover. Right. And I said, wow. And at 33 and 0. 33 and 0. Man, I said, oh. It Larry Bird has some swag at the Sports Illustrated um, cover magazine. We got the ladies. Like, shh. We got a dominant one coming. Ain't nobody stopping him. I better lay low. I better stop talking. My man is certified trash talker. You know what I'm saying? He basically said college basketball secret weapon, explosive Larry Bird. Ain't been ranked since. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> and they weren't ranked before. Yes, that's right. It is Indiana State against Michigan State. I'm Bryant Dumbo, and the fans here are going bananas. That 1979 NCAA title matchup between Larry Bird and Magic Johnson mm. is still the highest rated basketball game ever played. Is this, the, guys, comment down below. Is this their first standoff before they actually get to the NBA and have their, you know, they, they, you know, their competitive run, you know, going against each other? It had to be, right? You know what I'm saying? Unfortunately for Larry Bird, it was one of his worst because Michigan State double teamed him all night long. And since Larry was largely a one man show, Indiana State had no answer. Look at the pressure around him. Two, three, man. And he's short. Bird. Way short. Bird hanging. Can't score. Well, that's okay because at the end of the day, we win, we lose. We win some, we lose some. But at the end of the day, I feel like this mentally prepared him to prepare for him to go against Magic Johnson again like he did and claim the victory. Because you know what I'm saying? And I never knew this. You know, I never knew they played in the, in the college, you know, and, and played against each other before actually their NBA runs. But at the end of the day, them playing with each other and, you know, in the USA basketball team, I know it had to be a strong sentiment because it's like, okay, we brothers, I know when they start playing against each other and they played on the United, you know, USA basketball team, I know they clicked. You know, they clicked. The chemistry was just like that. It was like Larry Bird say Magic Johnson made him want to leave that extra pass and then Magic Johnson wanted to get from that extra pass. So it created so many openings between those two where every time they got in, the score went back up. And then when they got out, they had much of an impact that if you sit them both out, the score was going down. They could have back in. The score was going up. They elevating again. So I know the sentiment along with the bond and the chemistry of playing together and didn't have to versus, versus each other. They're going to bring the game. Just as they bring in the game working together, they're going to bring it even harder working, competing against each other because it's a competitive, you know, it's a competitive sport. It's a comp competitive playing field. So I know at the end of the day, when he had to play against Magic and the Lakers, he reminisced his time and trust me, he got he got his get back as any legendary individual would that's very talented, like Larry Bird himself. You know what I'm saying? Larry Bird has had a cold shooting night. Like a shot to the mm. Posterized him. Yeah, I, 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 could, I know in the eyes of a legend, Larry Bird is not taking that lightly. You know what I'm saying? Because at the end of the day, in the eyes of a champion, when they have that opportunity to attack and seize the opportunity again and give it all they got, they're going to treat it like it was their last since they had to play them last time and they lost and didn't win. I thought you did a great job on Larry Bird in the zone denying him the ball. Yes, uh, Coach uh, gave us a good game plan to go against Larry Bird, and all we had to do was go out and do it. That's what we've done. And congratulations, and Super Bowl game. Yo, he sound the same. It's just so fact. Magic Johnson look weird with that fro on his head. No, it still hurts. Mm-hmm. 
when you win 33 in a row and you walk into a game, you know, you never know what to expect, but I expect to win. We didn't win. Larry Bird said this was his most painful loss ever. And when he got to the NBA, he took that pain out. Mm-hmm. He took all his pain and used it as motivation and took it out on the court. And look at that. My man's eyes just blue as the jersey. You know oh. what I'm saying? Look. Walk into the game, you know, you never know what to expect, but I expect to win. We didn't win. My man is going to take that pain, that hurt, whatever. He's going to use that motivation. He put it in his work, his craft. Larry Bird said this was his most painful loss ever. And when he got to the NBA, he took that pain out on the entire league. Not only did he play with a level of toughness that the NBA had never seen before. Dang, my man be flop. My, that's one thing. My man going to put his body, going to sacrifice himself to go get that ball and, and give it all he got on the floor. And he going every single time. You know, ain't... If, I played basketball since I was like four years old. So anybody know playing basketball, if you dive to the floor and put your whole body and throw it to the floor, especially in this competitive sport where you got to give it all you got and put all your pain, use it as frustration, use that as use that frustration, that pain as motivation to go harder, to win. You know what I'm saying? And let your frustration be your motivator. The simple fact is when a coach see you sacrifice your body and dive to the floor to go get that ball, like... And putting your whole body and your life on the line, the blood, sacrifice, sweat, you know, all you got on that on that floor. And you got to die to the floor for the sake of, you know, creating an uh, amazing playmaking opportunity to go get that ball from the other opponent. And diving on that floor and giving it all you got and to go catch that ball, to dish it out to another teammate. Coaches love that, man. Not only is about it's not even about coaches loving it, but the simple fact is that I mean it was a sign of significance that you'll do whatever you have to do to make a playmaking play for the sake of your team to win this game. And Larry Bird did that. My man flipping over chairs, flipping and flopping, you know. Larry Bird's trash part. talking stories are that of legend. Mm -hmm. Even Larry's own teammates could face his wrath. Not many younger people know this. But Hall of Famer Pete Maravich, who holds nearly every major NCAA scoring record, including highest scoring average at 44.2 points per game, was actually teammates with Larry Bird in Larry's rookie year. However, Larry couldn't care less about Pete's NCAA accolades because... Nobody caring about that, man. We living in the now. Yeah, I'm a rookie, but right now we focus on now. You celebrate your accolades when you out the game, but right now you still in the game, man. I got a lot to give, and you with me. And at the end of the day, you either going to be with me or you're going to get lost. But at the end of the day, I'm going to give it my all in this game, rookie or not. You know what I'm saying? These two butted heads, Larry got so disrespectful. Well, my, my death story, I, I think, was probably Pete Maravich and Larry Bird. Uh, Pete Maravich is pass the ball to Larry. Pizza man goes down and double teams Larry. Larry puts up a, a tough shot and timeouts called. And um, we come to the timeout and, and Pete Maravich looks over and Larry says, Larry, Larry, they're double teaming you, man. You can't force up those kind of shots. And Larry looks up and goes, if you were any damn good, they wouldn't be double teaming me. <laughs> this is Exactly, because at the end of the day, if Pete Maravich is, is that good and bringing a value to the game and bringing a value to every play, and, you know, being open, you know, running back door, creating playmaking opportunities, get himself open, you know, moving around. So the simple fact that, you know, running through a teammate screen, running around it to get open in the corner, dish out a shot, you know, juke, juke, jag, you know what I'm saying? Do a little juking, juking, little dancing, dancing like you, you know what I'm saying? Like you salsa dancing so you could trick up your defender so you can get open and constantly moving, moving, moving and transition. At the end of the day, eventually that tension off of Larry Bird is going to drift over to Pete, which is going to leave Larry Bird open. So at the end of the day, it's going to most likely make them want to play a 2-3, 3-2 type of zone type of defense because at the end of the day, they got two players at the end of the day they need to, they need to double down on. But at the end of the day, if it's constant moving, constant motion, and everybody working together and the ball is moving faster than the defense, at the end of the day, 
Larry Bird, like, look, man, you want me to not stop. You telling me I'm forcing shots, but at the end of the day, if you get open and if you any good, at the end of the day, they'll be focused on you too. So at the simple fact that we could piggyback off of each other and win this game and sit there and, and really create some playmaking op shot opportunities rather than me trying to figure it out all the time myself and me figuring it out. Larry Bird, like, look, hold up, hold up. I'm the one that's figuring out the opportunities to put the scoring board on the scoring board because people lie, women lie, men lie, but numbers don't lie. You know what I'm saying? So at the end of the day, if you any value and you if you any asset to the team based on your NCAA accolades and, and all the things that you accomplished, show me right now and put it on the floor, man. You want to be my critic, my biggest critic, like you sitting here being a whole commentator, but at the end of the day, you're not even being my teammate. Hall of Fame to another one. I was in shock. Ouch. Pete Maravich retired at the end of that year, while Larry Bird made the All-Star team. Mm. Here comes the rookie out of Indiana State, who has lived up to his expectations. Larry Bird, and I'm told the other night here in Washington, he put on a clinic. Dantley gave it back, and Kermit Washington, and Bird rebounds. And now out. it's the East for the fast break. Behind Ooh, him. Behind him. Back. I love how Larry creates not only playmaking opportunities for himself, but he'll dish it out to a teammate if it makes sense, let alone he always follow through with not just his shot, but his teammate's shots if he got to go get that board and put it back up if they don't execute. Get the rebound, take the pass back up the middle, make that pass, and stay right with it when they're right in there. To, to rebounding, besides strength, is quickness. Mm. Good lateral movement. In overtime of the All-Star game that year, Larry Bird took over on national TV by draining two corner shots back to back to take the lead. He ignited his. Did Larry Bird have his own mascot? Because they had a bird from Team USA that I think, I believe that was for out of support of Larry Bird because I don't see that mascot nowhere this day and age. Reputation as one of the most clutch players in NBA history. Hot Rod Hundley now has joined us over here at the announce table. And Larry Bird. Come on, man. You, come on. You better, you better play. You better play some defense, bro. The scoring table is not yet clear. This is a three-pointer. Yes, it is. After that, he pulled off the play of the game and one of the greatest passes in his career. 42-136, three-point try by Sigma is off. And Bird comes out of the move. Dishes to Malone. Malone comes up. Stayed with it. Sigma with a hand. My man hit my man playing volleyball. He say boom. Straight up. I love how Larry Bird creates these passes where it's like as soon as you give it to him, he like mid-air and he just Slingshot it right back to you as a teammate, and then the teammate execute and set him up perfectly for a layup, bro. That's amazing. Gervin, I don't believe he saw George Gervin. That year, Larry Bird finished fourth in MVP voting, won Rookie of the Year, and pissed off his arch nemesis Magic Johnson, mm. which ended up being the greatest individual rivalry in sports history. We ended up in the two most famous, you know, franchises, right. the Celtics and the Lakers. And then his personality was Boston. My personality was Hollywood. Right, right. So, right, right. I right. mean, they couldn't have scripted this any better. No. Yeah, that is true. You don't got to script you, though, because at the end of the day, y'all got two competitive, game-changing individuals that's going to put their life on the line, give it all they got, you know, and, and do what they got to do, execute into the highest extent, you know, portraying their talents. But it just happened to be that naturally, naturally gifted as they are, it all just came together beautifully. Where when they did have to meet again, 
they were in, like like Magic said, they were in two franchises that was known for gifted, talented individuals going at each other like that. That's why I always say when they come to the Celtics and the Lakers, that's like a football game, a turkey game where, you know, we playing like your 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 high school team is playing against their rivalry. That's how you look at the Boston Celtics and the Los Angeles Lakers to this day. You know what I'm saying? It's like a rivalry team. Was rookie of the year. I think you got like one or two votes. That's all. That's all you. I, That's think, all. Like, I think it was like 32, 33 no, to no, like one or two. No, even le- more than that. It was 60 something to like mm. two. <laughs> <laughs> I hate to say that too. I got to say that on TV. <laughs> and so I was pissed, man. I was mad. You like, hold on. Became the first rookie in NBA history to be named finals MVP. Yeah. I was only the third dude ever in NBA history to go from the college championship. Yeah. To the NBA Finals Championship, right. and I, so I get. Dang, my man had three votes. Well, look, bro, I got a bird. Like, look, I'm gonna get you back, brother. And when I get back and I get in this game in the NBA, I'm gonna leave you with three votes just to give you some type of sympathy, just to, so you can feel for yourself a little bit. Because at the end of the day, that feeling that you gave me in the NCAA. I'm going to give it right back. Yeah. Two folks. Yeah. And they were two L.A. dudes. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm like, okay, he's not that much better than me. Right. Not 63 to 2. Right. But okay, I took it. I took it. And I'm glad that we came in together because I had somebody to measure myself to. Right. And say, hey, okay, he's great. I can't let him get, get too, too far, far ahead of me. I got to work mm-hmm. hard because I want to stay in you're keeping each other on their toes, which is beautiful. It's a beautiful thing, man. And trust me, believe it or not, them two is bestest friends. You know what I'm saying? Because they 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 gave excitement to the game just because of their aura and their talent. So when they met up and it was time to compete, it's something to look forward to. I mean, that's like after a while, as you being in a room full of people and you're the smartest one in the room, it gets boring. You know what I'm saying? How are you going to... Embrace any more value for yourself if you're the only one knowing something, and everybody else don't know. Don't know nothing. Don't know piss nothing. You, how you? Now put some respect on Larry Bird's name. Yeah, put some respect on his name, man. But at the end of the game, family, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Get this video a big thumbs up, man. I'm crush that YouTube algorithm. It's totally free. Comment down below any legendary topic and more reaction videos you guys want to see. And remember, family, spread that peace, love, and positivity and let the love supersede the hate. At the end of the day, I just want to say shout out to all my Larry Bird family. At the end of the day, I appreciate all the support. And, you know, I love I love basketball. I've been playing basketball a little bit about me, not to get off topic. I've been playing a little bit of basketball since I was like, like I said, four years old, three to four years old. And um, I love the game, man. I love the game. Um. Um, I'm, I'm not necessarily a fan of anyone, especially in the NBA today. Um, I love Larry Bird and what he brought to the game. I love Magic Johnson. Um, and I'm a big fan of Kobe Bryant, you know, for the generation, a generation within, you know, my time was Kobe Bryant was who I looked up to. Um, rest in peace, rest his soul. Um, but, um, I'm just a fan of Kobe Bryant, you know, as well. And, um. Nowadays, man, besides LeBron being the oldest one in the game, it's not really that much excitement today in the NBA as it was Larry Bird and Magic Johnson time and Kobe and Shaq time. So, you know, we'll see. But at the end of the day, it's beautiful to see how um, the Mount Rushmore individual of the game, Larry Bird, impacted the game. But at the end of the day, family, I just want to leave out with a legendary piece. Love you guys.